good morning, Bimblers. And you join me here in sunny Liverpool, right outside Lime Street Station. And it's ridiculously early because I want to be in and out today because Liverpool are playing in the Champions League final tonight. And one, I want to watch it. And two, I want to be out of the way when everyone's watching it in Liverpool. Because it might get a little bit raucous. So we should stop messing about and bimble. Let's bimble. So we climb the Herculaneum steps 
and we reached Ellswick Street. More on that in a minute. But why are the Herculaneum Steps called the Herculaneum Steps? Well, that was because they led down to the Herculaneum Docks. But why were the Herculaneum Docks called the Herculaneum Docks? Well, it was because they were built on the site of the old Herculaneum Pottery Works. The Pottery Works used to make cream ware, which is cream coloured pottery, and pearl ware, which is pearly coloured pottery. But they wrapped everything up by 1866, and the land was bought and turned into some docks which isn't a very uncommon occurrence in Liverpool. And in 1878, they started using the docks to store all the petrol and oil from the Stanlow and Tranmere oil refineries. And they also used to store all kinds of other explosive materials. They built what was called casemates into the sandstone of the cliffs and lined them with stone so they'd be blast proof and they could store all kinds of dangerous things there. Obviously it was used during the Second World War and it was the place where all the bombs were kept. And those casemates are now Grade 2 listed. In the 1980s all the docks were filled in and actually turned into a car park. But in the noughties they decided to build some flats on it. And the people who built the flats thought what would be nice in the centre of them would be if they dug out one of the docks and had it filled with water and a few plants in it, a few fountains and that would be something nice for the people in the flats to look at and something nice for us to sneak in and have a good butchers at so why didn't I do my piece to camera by the casemates or by dock number four well Ellswick Street is famous for being the filming location for the sitcom Bread B -b Bread. I never really liked the programme but I liked the theme tune but one programme that I did like that they filmed round here was Boys from the Black Stuff and in episode one they pick up a plaster called Snowy Malone and the sniffers from the DSS are watching from their Austin Maestro van and the lad driving the van is a young Roy Cropper This is Sefton Park and up until 1591 it was a royal deer park owned by the royal family but after then it was disparked which means that it was thrown open to the public and it was bought by the Earl of Sefton hence the name Sefton Park whoever the Earl of Sefton was in 1867 sold the park to Liverpool City Council for £250,000 which is a mega amount of money but I suppose they did get quite a lot of space the council needed to make a green space for the people of Toxteth as it was becoming quite overcrowded and apparently the air was stale and you could smell all the night soil so they made them a park so that they could get some fresh air in 1896 they built this behind me the palm house and I'd like to get closer but some selfish so and so is having a wedding in there today don't they know I'm trying to film bimbles here? It was built by a company called Mackenzie & Moncur. But it was all paid for by big books millionaire Henry Yates Thompson. He made all his money getting married. He married an Elizabeth Smith, who was the daughter of a George Smith, who owned the Pall Mall Gazette. And after marrying Elizabeth, he was given the Pall Mall Gazette. He actually changed the newspaper from being a conservative publication to being a liberal one 
and he hired an editor called W.T. Steed. And he wrote an article in the newspaper called The Maiden Tribute of Modern Babylon, which was all about child prostitution. And it's believed that that article is what put pressure on the government to raise the age of consent from 13 to 16. Henry H. Thompson didn't really like the newspaper business and he eventually sold the newspaper for £50,000. That's £6.5 million in today's money. And he sold it to a William Waldorf Astor. You may recognise the name Astor due to his cousin, John Jacob Astor. He was on the Titanic when it sank and in fact he was the richest man on the Titanic. There's probably some of his millions locked in a safe in the bottom of the ocean right now. If you've watched the film, you may recognise the moment where someone asks Jack whether he's of the Boston Dawsons. That's supposed to be John Jacob Astor. Hi. You can have just what you like. Why won't you figure it out? Figure it. You know I talk really loud and you heard, oh, it's deafening. You still won't figure it out. Figure it. But with a simple frame of mind and a little time. Protest all you like We both know With good will on your side In a little time You can have just what you like We both know It's easy if you just try Better off this time This is Garson Industrial Estate, or at least it was. It burnt down in May of 2020, but they'd already started dismantling it in 2018. It wasn't always an industrial estate, as with most industrial estates. It was originally a factory, and it was a bobbin factory. You know, the little wooden things that you put cotton round. It might seem very niche, but given the location right next to the River Mersey, it makes complete sense. It was opened by the Wilson brothers and their original factory was in Todmorden in Yorkshire and they used to bring wood from Ireland 
into Liverpool, put it on boats and send it down either the Mersey or the Manchester Ship Canal, swap it over onto the Rochdale Canal and take it to Yorkshire to Todmorden, which was an awful waste of time. In 1903 they built a factory here in Liverpool, which meant the wood could be brought into Garston docks, made into cotton reels and put on the same boats that were taking the cotton into Manchester or Cottonopolis. Cotton was massive business round here. The docks at Garston were the docks that handled all the wood anyway. That was for the bobbin works, but also for Bryant and Main Match Factory, which is about 100 yards down that way. Nowadays it's just a patch of waste ground with some very noisy seagulls. And there's nothing here apart from melted wheelie bins and this fantastic artwork all over the walls. It's worthwhile coming to see that on its own.